Hi guys, um, thanks for coming back. Oh my gosh, my hair was super bad. Sorry guys, I've just washed my hair, um, hence why it's just looking like this, like a drowned rat. Um, I've been away for a little while, just because I'm busy because of work, and I had some time off, um, and I'm back. And um, I don't feel 100% today, um, but I thought I had to come back and start my videos again, my YouTubing again. What's the point in creating an account if I'm not doing it, it doesn't make no sense. I'm so sorry, this is so annoying. And I haven't even started, haven't even used the camera that I bought. So I've got to start using it. Um, so today I'm talking about equality and diversity and inclusion, and what is that, and how you promote that at your school or your nursery. So what is equality? So equality, inclusion, and diversity basically they are all under the same umbrella and they all mean the same thing okay so equality is basically treating everybody the same okay regardless of their sex their gender their religion their race their preference treating everybody the same inclusion giving everybody every child the same opportunity regardless of their ability or disability so that could be a learning disability um a physical disability you're treating every child or young adult the same okay um diverse sorry discrimination is when you discriminate against somebody because of the color of their hair their skin um where they come back where their background I don't know, their background um their um social class so this could be up mid upper upper, upper social class middle social class or working class or working class I'm proud um, so upper working up working class could be somebody that's from a very very wealthy background so that's upper class middle class is somebody that lives quite comfortably you know maybe lives in a nice area got a nice paid job lives comfortably working class is somebody that you know has is on a low income um, lives somewhere nice but you know they basically their wages meet what their needs are and they they just live on a monthly basis um good what they're getting um it could be anything it could be for why what somebody's wearing uh brands they're wearing not wearing um it could be you'd be discriminated because of your cultural beliefs your views your preferences you might be heterosexual you might be um, in a gay relationship you might be bi you might be tri and that could you could be discriminated because of that or because of your age or your religion yeah um so like i said equality is treating everybody the same inclusion is where you're including everybody and discrimination okay is when you discriminate against somebody so how do you promote equality in your nursery think about your resources do you get let your children um dress up as boys as girls and boys do you let your children dress up in um opposite sex gender so you you know you encourage the boys if they want to dress up as a barbie or as a fairy in a home corner or they want to play in a home corner do you encourage that if a girl wants to play with the cars and you know be a mechanic and she wants to explore that in her role play or she says she wants to be a mechanic when she's older. Do you encourage that or do you say, well, no, actually, you know, you're a girl, you really should, that's a man's job. You should, you know, be a teacher or a nurse, which is typically a, a female job. Um, like, as you know, like working in, in this sex of education, it's a, it's a female dominated environment and we hardly see any males. Um, but when it's when we do have males in this environment in a working environment it's really nice to see especially for the young boys um positive role models making a difference um and i think it's really nice that men are stepping forward and want to work in the early years sector or in the mainstream sector i think it's important i think it promotes equality inclusion i really do um so also about in the nursery you have posters up you know of males in a female dominated environment and females in a male dominated environment and do you have stories um, and dressing up clothes that promote both well both genders dressing up in different professions you know stories on different professions 
Um, do you talk about it in story time or circle time about what your children want to be? And encouraging that if a boy says he wants to work in the hairdressers or he wants to be a cook and the girl says she wants to be a soldier or she wants to work in the RAF or the Navy or, you know, she wants to do um, agriculture. You know, do you encourage that? Yeah. Inclusion is, again, letting everybody be part of activities. So this is children with a ability or a disability. So do you adapt your resources to support children's needs? So, for example, if a child has a hearing problem, do you let them sit at the front of your circle time? Do you have um, resources so they can listen to things on loudspeaker, for example? If they have a sight impairment, do you have Braille? Do you have large print books? Do you have audio phones for children to listen to stories out loud? And it's not those particular children, it's for all children. And speaking to children about differences. Now there's a lovely book out there called All About Me, and it promotes differences. From your hair colour, your body shape, um, your gender, your cultural beliefs. So yeah, do you do that in your nursery? Yeah? Do you also make sure, you know, that when you are, how are, how are including all children, making sure that you're adapting a lesson plan so all children take part in it? So this might be, you know, a child might have severe asthma. So when physical play activities are they included? So they might be the goal or they might be the one being a referee. So they are included and they are taking part in activity. They don't feel excluded or discriminated against because of their their health condition, for example. Do you do that in your nursery? You will have also policies and procedures. So you have your behavioural policy, you have your inclusion policy, you have your equality and diversity policy within your nurseries or your schools, and how you promote that. So international days, so this could be days where you get your parents to come in and bring different foods. Obviously during COVID you can't, uh, because the pandemic is still alive and well. And most nurseries and schools do not allow parents in. But do you, does your school promote that? Does your nursery promote that by like Chinese New Year or Ramadan? Um, do you have like their cultural dish or cultural dishes? You know, um, you know, Jewish for Passover, Christmas, obviously, you know, you will have Christmas dinner. Um, so do you promote like for Chinese New Year? Do you have like noodles, spring rolls, um, cultural music for different cultural celebrations? So think about, Next month is Black History Month, right? What are you guys doing for Black History Month? That is diversity. So diversity as well is about celebrating differences. So in your nurseries or your schools, you will probably, because we live in a very mixed environment, a very mixed society, children from different ethnic backgrounds, different races, different cultures, different beliefs, different religions. So how do you promote diversity in your nursery? Do you have diversity posters? Do you have welcome signs that promote di well diversity in your nursery? You know, the big world sign that has welcome with in all different languages or the hello sign with hello in all different languages. Do you have different posters up on your wall that promotes diversity? Different colours. Do you have books that promote diversity in your nursery? How else do you promote diversity? Do you give everybody the same opportunity? Which you should do because equality and diversity is about that it's given everybody the same opportunity. So if you feel that somebody is being discriminated against, so if you saw one of your staff members discriminating against one of your children in your room, what would you do? What would you say if they if in a home corner, boy wanted to do dress up, the staff member said, no, you're a boy, you can't dress up. You can't do that. You can, you know, you're a boy. Why don't you go and play the cars? Come and sit for me and play the cars in the construction area. What would you say? Because it's part of the EYFS requirement, isn't it? Yeah, that you're promoting inclusion and you're promoting positive relationships and you're promoting diversity in your setting. So what would you do to that staff member? Bearing in mind that staff member may not realise that he or she is doing anything wrong because they might come from a background where their, their cultural beliefs or their personal preferences, they may not agree with boys dressing up as, you know, fairies or elf stuff from Frozen. So how would you deal with that? 
Would you put the money in your training? Would you speak to your line manager? Would you speak to them? You know, would you pull them aside and have a quiet word and say, hi Mandy, you know, I just want to say to you that this is not correct. This is not our policy and procedure in relation to inclusion and diversity. They might not even read the policies and procedures in your nursery room. You may not have even read them. Do you know what your quality and inclusion and discrimination policy is? Do you know about your part, your behavioural policy in relation to promoting inclusion and diversity? Do you know about your special education, educational needs policy, which is part of your inclusion policy? Adaption. Do you know that? Think about it. Think about what you do and how you do it and your own personal beliefs and preferences. Do you take that to work with you? So you might come from a Hindu background, a culture, sorry, or a Christian, or Orthodox, Jewish Orthodox, or Greek Orthodox. So your culture or your, the beliefs that you were brought up around, you, there's certain things that you may not agree with that you see in your nursery, that are implemented in your nursery or school. But do you put those views forward to other staff members? Do you pressurise them and say, you know, you must read the Quran. The Quran says this, the Quran says that. You must read the Bible. Yeah? Or you may not have a faith. And somebody, you might be in a Christian school, you might be working in a Christian school, but you don't have that same belief as them. Do you say, I don't believe in this? Or are you open-minded? And it, with your own preferences and your own ideas and your own ideology, do you impact that on others? Because you shouldn't. Whatever you may think, you can't impact that on the children in your nursery or your staff or your team members because that is not within your policies or procedures to do that. If there's something that you may not agree with, then go and speak to your line manager at the end of the day or your room leader or your manager but you can't stop a child or a young adult choosing to do what they want to do may that be playing in a home corner may that a young girl want to play with the cars or be bob the builder you can't you can't discriminate and also age discrimination as well so you know if you felt that you'd be discriminated because of your age because you're a young young adult working in the early years and you've got a mature staff member telling you how to behave or what to do and how to do it. That is a form of discrimination. So you can go to your line manager, again, your room leader, your manager, discuss that. If you feel you're also being discriminated against, it could be because you wear hijab. It could be because you need to pray at certain times of the day and haven't got a prayer room. And that's part of your cultural belief and you would like to pray. So you could ask them, you know, could you use the staff room at certain times of the day? Or is there a room that you could just go out of on your lunch break and go and use to go and pray for a couple of minutes? With my learners, we used to have that in our staff room. Our learners used to go and say, they used to say to me, Shami, can we use the staff room to go and pray? And I said, of course you can. And we'll keep that room out of bounds for about half an hour and then my other students will know this. And there are nurseries in East London, particularly in East London, uh, that have prayer rooms for, for staff members. Not necessarily young children, but staff members that have to pray at lunchtime. So again, it's all about you guys as well. So how to think about it? How does my nursery promote equality and diversity? How are we promoting Black History Month? How do we promote diversity every month? How do we do it? You've got Diwali coming up in November. How are you going to promote that? Obviously Christmas, that's a massive one. But how are you going to promote that? So think about it. Think about what you're doing and how you're going to do it. And guys, I'm going to leave it there today because I'm all bumped up. I feel very snotty. Um, I look rough as poo. Um, but I just wanted to come back and do a video. Um, just to kind of say, I'm back in the game, I'm here, and you will have another one up in a week, or by the weekend. Um, so, thank you so much for today. Thank you for popping by. For those that haven't seen me, my name's Charlotte Renzi, I should have said that from the beginning. 
please give this video a like and a thumbs up please leave a comment down below please subscribe i'd love more subscribers i've got 14 um i would love a few more please if possible um also um if you want any links or anything to anything that i've spoken about today please leave a comment below if there's anything you want me to talk about for the eyp which is what i'm talking about today which is the early years practitioner level two um, and I'm also going to be going on to the EYE, which is the earliest practitioner level three. Um, please drop me a line below. So I'll be doing part two of equality and diversity. And then I'm going to go on to the your endpoint assessment, which both level two and level three have to go through. And it's very lengthy. So until then, guys, I will see you soon. Thank you so much for popping by. I really appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy the rest of your weekend or the rest of your week. Depends on whether you're, when you're watching this. And I'll see you soon. So until then, guys, thank you so much. Um, take it. Sorry, you're probably thinking, why do you keep looking down? It's my little stopper thing to stop this, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Um, I'll speak to you soon, guys. Take care. Bye. Bye.